actually divided into four, with each of them being 25%. So obviously, if you do the simple mathematics, it's 100%. So that means if you are able to do well in each and all the speaking criteria, then you are sure of your 100% mark, which is actually what is called band nine. All right? So it simply means you are going to pay full attention to the speaking criteria that we're going to mention below. The first one is called fluency and coherence. Fluency and coherence. I'd like to give each of them a word that you can always remember. Anytime you hear fluency, remember flu. Then anytime you hear coherent, remember together. So the IELTS examiner assesses your ability to flow as you speak. That is your ability to speak without long pauses, self-correction or repetition. The ability to flow as you speak. Again, coherence have to do with the unison between your point, when you give a point, when you explain that point, and then when you try to give an example or illustration. So it simply means if you give a point, and then you try to explain the point, or you try to give an illustration, everything should mean the same thing, should support that your idea, that your opinion. Not like when you give a statement, and then your explanation is facing here, your statement is facing here, and the example is a different thing. So it means that your point or whatever you are saying is not coherent, all right? So your ability to flow and maintain that logical progression or unison as you speak is one of the key things that I have to look out for, all right? So the second one is called lexical resource. Lexical resources. Okay, cool. So lexical resource deals with vocabulary, or what we call vocabs. And under this, you look at advanced words. The first thing you need to take note of is IELTS doesn't want you to use too much of everyday words. It is called weak words. If you use too much of everyday words, it make your sentences to be weak, all right? So you are going to use advanced words, but not just advanced words, advanced words or words that relate to the question, that relates to the topic. It's called register, the normal standard English. So these are words, if you are talking about farming, you are going to use words that relate to farming. If you are talking about health, you are going to use words that relate to health. If you are talking about ICT, you are going to use words that relate to ICT. So your ability to use these words and use them naturally and appropriately, like correctly, is it's called registered language in English. Yes, it's what is assessed under lexical resource. Okay. Yeah. So that is why, if you remember in part two, during the note taking, I told you guys that once you identify the topic of the question, like the example we saw that there was vocation, the next thing you need to do is to quickly think of synonyms that can work or go with it, like profession, employment, work, job, and all of that. So that is what lexical resource assesses. Your ability to use several words. That also means you shouldn't do word repetition. Don't keep repeating the particular word over and over again. All right? So let's move to the third one. Grammar. Remember, we just talked about vocabs hmm. under lexical resource. Vocabs has to do with words and their meaning. However, grammar has to do with the way you connect words to words to make new meaning. That is what is called grammar. So if I have she, I have here, I have is, she is here. So these are three words I've just combined to make one sentence, right? So this is a word she, 
here is these are three words we can make it into one grammar so this is grammar so that means you also know that this is actually a sentence right so that means grammar talks about sentence or sentence formation sentence construction so on that grammar you look at the way sentences are formed whether they are properly formed or not all right that's one of the things you look at under grammar then secondly you look at types of sentences or sentence type and under that you remember that we have simple sentence or sentences we have compound sentence complex and compound complex and all of that but the point here is this simple sentence like this one we have here she's here um, does not give you enough information just summarize the point so if you use too many simple sentences while you are speaking in the IELTS speaking test you are going to put the examiner in the position where he or she will have to be asking you too many questions like who is she why is she here do you understand so the examiner will have to be asking you too many questions and like you remember we said in part one the examiner is actually supposed to ask you three questions remember that we said that yesterday now if you use too many simple sentences you put the examiner in a position where he or she can ask you up to five questions and it's going to affect your score so what it simply means is that use more of compound sentence sentences that have dependent and independent clause sentences that the examiner when you make the sentence you've answered possible questions that is why when the examiner asks you, tell me about your hometown, for example, in part one, don't just say my hometown is a suburb. Say more than that. You know, my hometown is a suburb. It's located in the South Local Government Area of the Enter State. Um, I think we have about um, five million people living in a suburb. You know, say something about it. So that gives the examiner the opportunity to understand what you are trying to say and to limit the number of possible questions the examiner is to ask him. So that is what you deal with under grammar. Remember, under grammar, you look at sentence construction. Your sentences must be, must be correct. It must make both grammar sense and logical sense. All right. And the second thing, you shouldn't speak so you know. Try to explain or expand on whatever you are trying to say. Under pronunciation, we take note of two things. The first is your ability to say a word correctly your ability to say a word correctly that is the first thing that is being looked at in the pronunciation as the speaking criteria so the advice here is that any word you have issue pronouncing this is good. don't use them here you said two things to note yes on that pronunciation yeah yeah the first one is to your ability to say a word correctly then the second one is the ease with which the examiner understands you. Okay. Yeah, beautiful. So, then under say the word correctly, I said the advice here is that any word you know you have issue pronouncing, avoid using them during the exam. Alright? Don't use them. Then secondly, which is very, very important, very, alright, is that ease with which the examiner understands what you are saying so if you put the examiner in a position where he or she has to think like oh, 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 oh is that what she meant ah okay that's what he was trying to talk about so that is all along the examiner was not connected it was lost if you have to if the examiner has to stress his or herself to relate to what you are saying it's not good for your score. So that means you should use proper sentences. And you, know, you should be audible, you should be clear. Part of all of them are part of it. Do you understand? So your ability to be audible, you speak up, you speak out, the examiner can hear you, the examiner can understand you. Like I keep saying over and over again, it doesn't have anything to do with trying to twist your tongue. Do you understand? Your ability to speak properly. Properly, like I have a student that is doing exam in that lab, that is a life exam. He's doing this exam that is called GMAT. GMAT is 
more difficult than others. So he's communicating with the white person already, and they can hear themselves. So IELTS exam doesn't have anything to do with trying to mimic somebody. Just be natural, but ensure that your sentences are constructed properly and that they are correct. Then your ability to say words correctly. Like I said earlier, any word you have issue pronouncing, don't use them. There's no point in using it, all right? So ensure your sentences are correct, and then make sure the examiner can hear you and relate with what you are talking about. So these are the four speaking criteria. If you are speaking, it's expect, if you make a mistake, it's expected that you correct yourself, all right? Now, if you use the wrong word, or you use the wrong phrase, then you correct yourself by using this phrase, excuse me. Once you say excuse me, then you say the correct thing. Whatever you've said before is part of it. Then if you discover that you were completely disconnected, like you just discovered that what you were saying or what you are saying mm -hmm. is not really lying with the question, mm -hmm. it's not answering the question. Yeah. So you want to start from beginning, then you use this phrase, let me start over. All right. So once you use this phrase, what you've said before is no longer valid. Okay. It's what you say after them. All right. Then the second tip is never say I don't know, regardless of the question, no matter how the question is. Mm -hmm. Just start saying something. By the time you start saying something, the examiners um, they are very trained persons, so they can decode or understand if you have an issue with the question, and then at their discretion they can amend the question for you. But you can't tell the examiner, I don't understand. You know, change mm. the question for me. Mm. Mm. What do you mean? You can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. So these two tips are very, very important. All right? So these are everything you need to know about the IELTS speaking test.